This is October 30th, 2020. It's basically 2.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. John C. Weaver, Roseman, California, to Bo in the fifth column. Bo, we got to talk. You were worried about having too much power in the branches, and I think even for a knowledgeable man of, of your, your stature and your intellect, that you also miss something. The Constitution was created to create a balance of power. The Founding Fathers, I believe, had discussed this a great deal. In fact, my question, sir, did you happen to read the Federalist Papers and understand? Because I had to take a couple of political science classes just to go over that information. And I had a very good political science teacher to pull out what we don't know and make us understand what the hell they were talking about. And that was like a few years ago. I'm currently in college right now. I'm not a university level. Community college still counts for something for an old fart. Keep this in mind, though. The Founding Fathers had to deal with this kind of situation because they didn't want a centralized government. But they didn't want it decentralized either. They made that mistake when they created the Articles of Confederation. And you probably forgot about Shay's Rebellion. Even I'm reminded a few times in different uh, formats that... Uh, too much power in the hands of the states, and not enough into the feds, creates a hell of a lot of havoc, especially when you need that strong federal support. However, there are times when you really don't need the federal support that strongly either. Now, what we have right now, uh, regarding the political situation, yes, we have an out-of-control equal maniac that people voted in because they couldn't stand with the politics and they didn't understand politics. They couldn't care less about the damn politics. They saw so much evil and corruption and people buying this and people buying that. And The truth of the matter is, concerning about democracy, it may be one of the worst governments we've ever had invented, but the thing is, it works. And it is easily corruptible because you can influence votes left and right. But it gives people the power to vote. To vote in who the who the best candidate is, even if he has to do a hell of a lot of double talking and 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 slimy dealing at this point over here, which brought us Donald Trump, and brought out the worst of the government we've got right now, including the Senate, who's still been rotting away, and plotting away, and pining. If you remember the first two years when we had Trump in office, we had GOP control. Both houses, no, both the House and the Senate, and the executive branch. And it damn near almost had a control in the uh, Supreme Court. And for two years straight, nothing was done. No laws were passed. People were going after each other left and right, snipping left and right. And then the midterms came in 2018. And the power changed. And still, unfortunately, we still got corruption in there, too, because we still have the old guard still going crazy at this point over here. And I hate to say it, but on some occasions, we do need to have some people with experience in the government, and we also need fresh blood in the Congress to get them an experience of what we need. Some of them actually do have pretty damn good ideas if you actually give people the chance to, to implement them. Even though the other people might, might say, are you kidding me? But keep this in mind, though. The executive branch was supposed to be in the same level as the legislative branch and the judicial branch. We had checks and balances created. Our founding fathers did that. They tried to foresee, but 
the checks and balances failed because we had politicians who know how to get past the checks and balances and disturb the Constitution in any way at this point over here is going to be even worse. We can't take away the power that's already bestowed to the president, whoever becomes president. But the thing of it is, the people have to understand who and what they're voting in. We know about Donald Trump. We know about his damn antics in his mouth, and people are getting used to damn shit, but we're going under. Our numbers are climbing regarding the death toll regarding the COVID. Our job situations are fluctuating left and right. And yes, the elite is getting more and more elite, while everybody else underneath the pyramid are getting screwed over left and right. And they have to have some things to keep themselves occupied to keep them away from the power elite. What scares me the most, Bo, is what happens if we happen to turn into a country like Venezuela? As much as I understood about Venezuela and studying about that in history class and also in political science at this point over here, they depend upon oil revenues. Screw the, uh, screw the market up one way or another regarding oil and they lose their money. The people who have depended upon the power and the money that the oil is bringing in are now going through hell because they can't keep the country going. The uh, theoretically elected president they had with the Constitution that they reformatted and reformulated and brought out to the people and only the elite voted on it to get it in office, if you, if you kept up with the history of that one there. Of course, you can Google that one. We haven't heard too much about what's going on with them. We don't know if the country is still going through the Civil War, and I'd imagine it still is throughout these years. When they had an interim president coming up from the people to represent the people, clashing with the military, who are starving their asses off because of a fat-ass dictator who screwed things over left and right, not to mention the elite people are freaking out left and right. I'm surprised people haven't left the damn country screaming and yelling their damn heads off. They didn't want to accept any foreign aid. What limited foreign aid is bringing food to people are getting sold on the black market. People can't afford it. They're starving. They're dying. Imagine that happening in the United States of America. Scary thought, isn't it? But use it for an example. How many industries do we have in our country that you count off hand? That many? How many industries have we lost so far? due to economics, politics, and the death of disease. Do the math on this one. Coming up with a weird-ass figure, are you? Because that's what we're facing right now as it is. Everything is becoming totally dependent upon each other. Everything is being related to each other at this point over here. Nobody's seeing that. Nobody's seeing the patterns. So why am I the only schmuck keeps talking about these damn patterns in the first place? I can't be the only asshole for this. But what I am trying to say, Bo, is this election does matter because the people are going to have to realize what the hell's going on. And if they're not going to realize what the hell's going on, for the next four years, they're going to be pounding their heads in the, in the sand and not to mention in the ground. And any other kind of solid surface they can find say, why didn't I vote for the other guy? Because the other guy had a plan, and this schmuck isn't. So if it sounds like I'm trying to support Biden at this point over here, I'm just pointing out the differences between one candidate to another candidate. At least one guy's got an idea what the hell he wants to do. It depends upon how the people are going to be voting in their elected officials and how the, po how the power is going to be changed in the government. Now, already, yes, we had interference with our elected officials because of the census, Got cut short. And it shouldn't have been. But it was. Because politics. People are too damn afraid to give up the damn power. And that what proves that's what bringing up your particular logic over here of saying that the executive branch should have been reduced. But it can't be. We have to have a constitutional law for that. We have to have a major change. We have to have something happening 
in the House and the Senate. And hopefully it doesn't piss off the damn judicial at this point. In order to change the executive branch, we need an amendment for that. We ain't got the time. There is no time for it. We're only days away before what we've got to do. And Senate is not coming back for this. But if we're going to be doing when we get our next president, it's going to be up to the Congress to decide if they're going to be going through that route or not. And it depends on what who and what we've got in Congress and the House of Representatives and the Senate to make that kind of decision. Is McGonagall, is, uh, is Schmuckhead from Kentucky going to continue to keep his job in the Senate as the chief of pain in the ass? Is Pelosi going to be maintaining her job as Madam pain in the ass in the House of Representatives? Are we going to be having the orange gas bag in the office? Is everything going to be status quo? So we have no idea right now. We can plan for the future. We can pray for the future. Well, we just have to get through each day at this point over here. We can make all the damn plans we want. But in the final analysis, when Tuesday comes up, that's when everybody's going to need the Xanax and the straitjackets. They're going to need the Maalox. And... They're going to have to keep away from their damn fingers and toes. Nails are not too damn tasty when it comes down for weakened teeth and all people trying to chew them off. Or even this middle-aged old fart, anyway. Anyway, I just wanted to bring that up to you, though. Oh, by the way, drop me a line every once in a while, will you? Let me know if you actually got something. If you got a burp your ass, I want to hear about it. We can communicate, and then we can argue with each other.